Good morning. This is Martin Patella, health coach at Life Enthusiast. There are two competing theories of how illness happens. One of the theories is the seed theory or germ theory. And they declare that seed is always the dominant feature. And by that they say is that the germ being the equivalent of the seed falls in wherever it may fall in and always will bloom into the plant that it was meant to become. And of course, in the germ theory, that means that uh, when you plant tuberculosis bacterium, it will give you tuberculosis. When you plant in a gonorrhea, gonococcus, you will have the illness, gonorrhea. Theory of the seed versus the soil. The soil being the terrain. The terrain theory says the seed will grow only if the soil is fertile. So perhaps the truth is somewhere in the middle, the combination of the two, is that only if I am a willing recipient of a message of a germ will I develop the symptoms. And that's truly what happened. People who were falling seriously ill with this infection were those who had comorbidities people whose immune systems have been or were challenged, people with high blood pressure, obesity, other circumstantial problems, immune challenges. So where am I headed with this? Well, we have the development in the military laboratories when they're testing for gain of function. Gain of function is a process by which they create something that wasn't there before. And with that, they are able to release this or at least transmit it to another person and cause an effect. And in these circumstances, the effects are pretty deadly. So Dr. Ardith says you will see effects that are mapped back to the venoms that they are researching or including in this genetic payload. So we go back to the beginning. So we have a plasmid. Inside of this plasmid, is a coiled piece of DNA. And in that piece of DNA, we have programmed the specific venom that when delivered will deliver specific effects. So the SARS-CoV-2, two dominant venoms in it was one was from King Cobra and the other one was from Chinese crate snake. And both of these have a strong effect on the nervous system. And he identified the alpha-7 nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, which is in great many cells, an important point in the brainstem. And in the brainstem, when affected or infected, it will start blocking the function of the diaphragm. Well, this diaphragm controls your breathing. So if that muscle becomes paralyzed completely, well, then you're done. But partially, you are unable to breathe correctly. And this is how these snakes kill their victims, by disabling their ability to oxygenate. So they become sleepy and unable to move. And then the snake can do their business by swallowing them whole. So when this arrives inside of a human, the diaphragm function starts going downhill and also the heart function starts going downhill. And that's what we saw. We saw people in hypoxia. Oxygenation levels are supposed to be 97, 98, 99%. People were turning up with 60 and even 50%, which is very critically ill. The point that I'm trying to get to is this, the delivery system. Whatever's going on inside of me, my system is going to process that and exhale it or produce it, right? The quickest way out is exhalation. The second one is sputum. Sputum as in stuff you spit out and your sweat and your urine and your other fluids could be feces, could be other bodily fluids that will contact others, but sweat is enough. The other delivery methodology, spraying it in the air and putting it in the water. And I suppose it's possible somebody decides to inoculate the water supply 
in a specific building or in a specific city or in a specific segment of town, they can do that. All they have to do is inject this into the water supply because once I drink it, it gets into my gut, then it modifies the microbiome and on and on and on. So now that we understand that these plasmids deliver the payload that will infect the bacteria that are living inside of us, that means that we become ready factories producing these changed genetics. We continue to produce these. So the reason I'm giving this introduction is that I want to talk to you about what blocks it, especially what's blocking the next one that's coming because they've already told us what's coming. They announced that it was going to be the Marburg infection, which is less easy to catch, but much more deadly. It's from the Ebola class. The one important thing is that this stuff can be blocked. One, it can be blocked by chlorine. So as long as there's enough chlorine in the water supply, it will kill it. But they control it and they can decide to dial it back. I should start talking about the antidotes at the same time. But this is called Amazing O, and this bottle is called Amazing Soak. These two things contain the same chemical. It's called a Fulton chloride mix. And what that does is when you release it, it will produce hypochlorous acid. It releases not chlorine, but hypochlorous acid, which is the same thing that your white blood cell will release inside your body when it tries to kill an invader. So this thing is in fact quite safe to use and non-destructive to your overall physiology. We also have it available in a spray that we call O spray. And this thing has on the top, this special injector that when you press this downward, mist comes out of the top. So you just blow it up your nose. Nanosoma repairs three things. One, it repairs mitochondria. That means that your food to energy conversion is optimized. Your blood glucose levels are optimized. And one of the major symptoms, diabetes, of this infection is neutralized. Two, it optimizes all cell receptors. And the important ones are vitamin D and vitamin C optimization. Vitamin C was another item on the list that he said is going to block the expression of this incoming threat, Marburg. Two other things he mentioned, glutathione and NAC. NAC, as in N-acetylcysteine, is a precursor to glutathione. Glutathione is helping the body recharge the vitamin C, which will refresh the balance of everything in the body. And then finally, the last one that was mentioned was EDTA. EDTA is a binder of electropositive things, calcium, magnesium, but also mercury and lead and other electropositive charged. To be fully alive, you need to be high level of oxidation and high level of antioxidation reduction. You have to have both. So that's what we're doing. We need to deliver this and we need to also deliver the antioxidants. We're working on something. You have heard of methylene blue. That's one of the ways of delivering high level of antioxidants. So we're going to do that, but vitamin C will do for now. How to explain what we need to do to cover ourselves for future, because now that they have released it, they can't unrelease it. This is now in the wild, that it's not going to keep coming. It will. I would encourage you to have the amazing O and the amazing soak on hand. Nanosoma, same thing. I use it every day. I expect to use it for the rest of my life, hoping that this will stay available. You can add to it by raising your vitamin C, getting glutathione, getting EDTA. All right. This has been Martin Petella, health coach at Life Enthusiast. You find me at life-enthusiast.com. You can reach me by phone at 866-543- Three three eight eight. Thank you for being here today.